Here are some examples of solving trig equations. We'll start with a pretty basic one, but already it's going to have a subtlety, and then we'll get a little more complicated. So the first equation is 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0. Well, the main task in the simpler trig equations is just to isolate the trig function first and then see what happens. So we're just going to get 2 cosine x equals minus 1, cosine x equals minus 1 half. Now, and <coughs> it kind of depends on the, the instructions here. Let's make the instructions explicitly. Find all solutions of this equation. And the all is really important. That's a very common instruction. If it's find all solutions, there's going to be an infinite number of possible x's. Remember x, it's kind of kind of a weird letter to use in this case, but it's just our general letter for a variable. It'd probably be better to think of it as a theta or some sort of angle. This is a mystery angle whose cosine is minus one half, and we're looking for every single one of them. Let's go to the unit circle. I, you shouldn't be doing these problems. You shouldn't be doing these problems if uh, and not using unit circle at some point, pretty much, um, especially if you're doing exact answers. So. We're looking for the mystery angle so that the cosine is equal to minus one half. Well, the, that's the horizontal position on the circle. And look, okay, here's one, two pi over three, but there's another one down here, four pi over three. And then is that everything? Well, no, because I can go around and around and around and around the unit circle. So certainly two pi over three is gonna be one example of that. X is two pi over three. Okay, so we were able to get an exact answer because this is a special known value. If this was like 0.47, we'd have to go to a calculator and use like the inverse. Okay, so 2 pi over 3, but that's not the only thing, the only way to represent something that's in that place in the unit circle. It's 2 pi over 3 or that plus 2 pi or that plus 4 pi or minus 2 pi or minus 4 pi. How do we write that down? There's a pretty standard way of writing that down, which is we just say plus 2 pi k or n, whatever, something from the middle of the alphabet. k and n are the usual choices. Um, something that sounds like an integer. In the middle of the alphabet usually is an integer. I would not use i because we already have i, a special rule for i with its imaginary numbers. Okay, so that's one place on the unit circle turned into an infinite pattern of, of possible things. These are all the angles that are coterminal. Okay, so let me just note that. Coterminal angles. It's all about coterminal angles coming back. But that wasn't the only place. There was another place. 4 pi over 3 is not described by that pattern because it's really a different place on the circle. But it has the same cosine. It has the same horizontal position. So we can just write that down separately as 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And so that's all these two infinite families of solutions. Okay. So even for a simple equation, we got a fairly complicated looking answer because of the coterminal angles bet. Okay. Now what about here? 4 cosine squared x equals 3. Okay, well, again, x only appears once. This is a really big thing. If x only appears once, your basic l task is to strip off layers. I like to think of it as stripping off layers of an onion to uncover the x in, in underneath. So we just divide by 4. Now we take the square root of both sides. And we have to be careful at this stage. We're going to get a plus or minus the square root of 3 fourths, or that's really uh, root 3 over 2. Once again, this problem was contrived to have this be a, a um, one of our simple values of cosine. So this is pretty contrived. This, is, this had been a uh, 1.5 or something like that, or if this had been a 7, it, we'd have to go to the calculator at this point. So now we're looking for all of the places where cosine is either plus root 3 over 2 or minus root 3 over 2. So again, stripping off the cosine, this is where one of two things can happen. If this is some weird number, you do inverse functions, and then you have to still worry about the coterminals, and that's tricky. If we we're going to start, though, with simple values, where we look it up on the unit circle, and we match, we do pattern matching with what we know are the simple values of cosine, but we still have to worry about the coterminal angle. So we're looking for all the places. Okay, here's minus, here's minus, here's plus, here's plus. All of these points have these values, where cosine is either plus root 3 over 2 or minus root 3 over 2. Now, I have these marked as pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and minus pi over 6. We could use those, um, but let me actually compare, let me do two possible instructions on this. Okay. Um, let's do something that's a little bit different. Find all solutions in one trip around the unit circle. And the standard way we're going to say that is 0, oops, I can't use that, is 0 
to 2 pi, including 0 but not 2 pi, because we don't want to count twice. Okay. So that would be one version of this problem. And there we make sure then the uh, minus pi over 6 that I happen to have used to describe this point isn't a good idea for that particular um, way of describing things. So we just go one trip around the end of circle, and we see which ones make sense. It was pi over 6, uh, 5 pi over 6, and 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Okay. So that's the minus pi over 6 turned into something that's between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. If the, the problem said, find all solutions, no qualification about in 0 to 2 pi, then we would just put the plus 2 pi k's on. So it would just be this stuff. Let me just copy it. And be everything plus... 2 pi k. And you can be you can do 2 k pi or 2 pi k. It doesn't really matter. So you usually want simple in front of complicated. But here, the pi is kind of simple because it's a number. But the k is kind of simple because it's an integer, but it's a variable. So it really doesn't matter. One of the few places where it really doesn't matter, even if, I think, even if you're picky about such things. Okay, so that would be one way to write it. Sometimes the book gets a little cleverer about such things. So for example, pi over 6 and pi, 7 pi over 6... Uh, those differ by pi. So, you know, if I just took pi over 6 and added one, an odd multiple of pi, I'd get to one of these guys. So I could actually just say, well, let's try this pattern and just put a plot plus a pi k. That already gets that guy. And these guys, 5 pi over 6, if you add pi, you get to the other one. So that'd be a, a little bit more uh, efficient way to write it. You can even be a little more clever with these kinds of things. For example, the minus pi over 6 wasn't legal here because I specifically wanted 0 to 2 pi, one specific trip around the unit circle. But here, you know, I could use, I could turn this into a minus pi over 6. Okay. That would generate this pattern. Well, that was the same pattern as this guy. So in fact, let's see, pi over 6 minus a pi. Oh. Well, so actually, yeah, let me, that was totally legal. And let me just do one more. We could be even more clever by saying, okay, Another way to get this pattern is actually take 5 over, pi over 6 and subtract pi. That's a minus pi over 6. Ooh, we have a notation for that. It's called plus or minus. And so that would, that would work as our most efficient way. One reason I show you that is not because it's super crucial to make it more efficient, less writing. I wouldn't mind this kind of thing at all. It's just in the back of the book they often do, uh, do this kind of thing where they try to make it really clever. And you might be like, I didn't get that. It might be equivalent to your answer. Okay. So pay attention, though, to these two different kinds of of instructions. Find all solutions in one specific trip around the unit circle, or find all solutions with the pattern with the with this the K here. Okay. Um, okay, so now here's a harder one. Now we've got X appearing twice. That is a huge, huge difference. We can't just strip off the layers of the onion, because there's not there's not just one X to sort of uncover at the, the core of the onion. So we have to be more clever. Well, we have to look at this and say, oh, this is vaguely similar to what we've seen before. And we can maybe make it even less different by doing a little substitution. Okay. So we're just making a substitution. This doesn't do anything. It's just a notational convenience, but it's a major notational convenience. We're just going to say, for right now, I'm not going to worry about the fact that sine x is calculated by taking the sine function and applying it to x. We're just going to say it's some quantity. It's some number. It's sine x is certainly a number, where when x is a number, sine x is a number. We're just going to call that u, and we're going to use that substitution to make this look similar, uh, simpler. I like to say it's hiding, temporarily hiding complexity. And that's legal as long as you don't hide it forever. Hey, look, that's something we actually know how to deal with. That's a quadratic. If it was really nasty, if they were being nasty to us, it would be something that wouldn't factor. But usually these guys are going to factor. So let's try, let's see, it kind of has to be a 2u and a u. And this kind of has to be plus or minus 1. Let's try this. Does that work? You get 2u squared, yeah, you get a minus 1, that works. And then you get a minus u plus 2u. Oh, that doesn't work. So we're going to have to switch it. There's more systematic ways of doing it, but we're not going to have super complicated quadratics. There's only a few of these that work in a way that gives nice answers. So you're not going to see a lot of complicated stuff. This is a pretty popular kind of thing. Though. Now we've got u and then a minus 2u, and that does work.
Okay. Now, why does that help? <clears throat> okay. So we've got either 2u plus 1 equals 0 or u minus 1 equals 0. So we've got two separate equations that only mention u once, and those are fine. So let's work on this one. This is u equals minus 1 half. And now we can put back in, oh, u is a temporary substitution for sine x. Hey, that looks familiar. Okay, now we just need the points on the unit circle that have height minus 1 half. That, those are these guys. So minus pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Oh, I need explicit instructions. Let's find all solutions. Okay, so that's going to be either um, minus pi over 6 shush, plus 2k pi or 2 pi k or 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And I could have used a, the 11 pi over 6 here. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm doing the general pattern, it just it just uh, depends on how you do the accounting, how you kind of create the list. But it's the same list. Okay. And then u minus 1 equals 0. That's just where sine x equals 1. Now, that's rather special. We've noticed here that we've usually gotten at least two, sometimes like four, patterns. Sine x equals 1, though, is pretty special. That's an extreme value. That's just pi over 2 in all of its coterminal angles. And so we're just going to get uh, x equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Okay. And it's, it's all of these together because these guys solve the equation because they make this guy 0. These guys solve the equation because they make this guy 0. And so in sum, it's just going to be all of these. So it's these, comma, these. And there might be some somewhat slightly cleverer way to write those. But you know what? These... This one certainly was a very different pattern from this. It's very unlikely we could put them together. They came from two pretty much unrelated parts of the equation. One big, big, big uh, mistake you can make. Let me go up here. Okay. Oh, yeah, one, one thing. You don't absolutely have to do the u substitution. We could actually just, everywhere you see a u here, it could be written as sine x. And some people like to do that. Um, but, you know, the u is free. It doesn't cost any money. And it does clarify that there's an algebra part, a pure sort of algebra 2 part, and then there's a trig part where the sine x comes in. You actually have to look at the unit circle and get your two pi's and stuff like that. Okay. So another second note, a very, very common thing to do, like right here. Okay. Let me copy this down. Um, and, well, let me display it. Okay. Here's an incredibly common wrong thing to do. Okay. So let me put wrong version. Please don't do this on a test. Okay. A lot of people say, ooh, I don't know, that looks hard to factor. And they don't try very hard to factor it. And instead, they let their subconscious take over and they say, oh, I can factor the left-hand side. That's easy. Gosh, people say factoring is hard. It's never hard. If you put the constant term on the other side, you'll always be able to factor out a u. That's not useful, though. Here's what people do. So far, it's not been an incorrect. Here's the wrong step. And that is to conclude that either u equals 1 or uh, 2u minus 1 equals 1. That's just not true. When I have the product of two numbers equaling 1, it doesn't mean that either of those is 1. It's true with 0. It's crucial that if the product of two numbers equals 0, either one of them is 0 or the other is 0. But that's a special fact about 0, not so much a special fact about just when you multiply any two things to get anything. So this is absolutely incorrect. And it's very common because people look at this and say, oh, I hate factoring trinomials. Ah. And uh, your, then their subconscious tells them, this will be easier to factor. But it's, it's useless. Who cares? Because you can't do anything with it. Okay? You cannot conclude this. And so you're stuck. You really have to have everything on one side. And the zero is crucial on the right-hand side when you have this kind of technique. Okay.